Hello, Guardians. Welcome back to Tower Casuals, the Destiny podcast. I am one of your hosts, Corey Deering, and alongside me, as always, is the Jolly Roger, the Kingslayer, the <laughs> the man you can't see. <laughs> oh, Captain, my Captain, the Drifter's best friend, Josh Finney. God, dude, I'm... I want to offer an apology to everyone for us not being on camera again, because my uh, my new office chair did not get delivered today like it was supposed to be. Uh, it went from being delivered today to now suddenly delivery date unknown, and that's never good in my experience. Hmm. So we'll see if it shows up this week or not. Trying to fix my internet crashing issue, which we think Corey and I, as a brain trust, may have figured out the issue here. Yeah, <sighs> we're it's, smart like that it, when we put our brains together, Josh. It, it's it's been a whole ass week, and you know I finally got to meet the man, the myth, the legend, Trevor. I got to meet him the other night. We we raided, we did a King's Fall run with uh, A1 Johnny and Nerd Generalist, and uh, he, he's a he's a lovely young chap. Yeah, yeah, he's a lovely chap. Uh, but for for real, it has been it's been a busy couple of weeks. There's been uh, been a lot of stuff happening off camera, you know, between the move and uh, a lot of things that have come up in uh, you know my personal life, and it's just been it's been hard to sit down and enjoy some Destiny. But I at least got to play a decent amount of the new season. I can finally talk about Arc three point oh talk about the seasonal activities i'm awake this week i'm not falling asleep in my chair well that's it's gonna be a good night that's good it's a very it's a very good night i'm not completely and totally worn out right now that's... i did not have to pay for a new washing machine also good very good i saved myself 700 bucks hopefully nice which i now get to spend on a laptop oh boy yeah we talked about that too <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's how we fix my network is I buy a new laptop. Yeah. Um, Corey, how, how has your week been? Hopefully less stressful and uh, eventful than mine. Uh, I mean, my week's been pretty busy uh, at work, but I mean, I did get to play King's Fall this past weekend with the, with the, with the Discord family over there, the community. We... Uh, had some issues with war priest doing some things that he wasn't supposed to be doing. And, uh, that was fun, but you know, it was funny. I w I recorded the whole thing <laughs> and the file is 318 gigs. Uh, Oh Jesus. My computer would have completely crashed. Yeah. Well, I saved it on an external drive and I was going to edit it down and put it on the YouTube channel just to, because it would be fun to have like community stuff up there. But it, the file is literally too large to edit to the point where I had to transfer it to a separate hard drive that was bigger. And I have to like copy, like what I have to do is like copy the file and then trim each file down to each encounter being its own. Like, Oh my God. File. And then what I'll do is like trim out the parts where, you know, that were bad and then move it along but yeah it's been uh it was fun though like i like it's funny how much i remember how much i didn't remember and then on top of that how much changed uh so which you know not it wasn't a lot but um i actually remember gogoroth being a lot harder than he was mm -hmm. uh but like yeah we blew through sisters in two like in two tries because we just messed up the first time we would have done it in one run and then or yeah S sisters is a gigantic joke of an encounter which is yeah. really funny yeah i remembered sisters being a lot easier or a lot harder than they actually were and we talked about it and then our, we recorded a uh, king's fall spoiler cast the other day which hopefully fingers crossed will be coming to y'all um, either this weekend or very early next week but uh, we were both like, uh, when we were talking about some of the differences from Destiny 1, you used to have everybody have to, had to get up on their plates yeah. for both that and for Oryx. And 
only having to have point A and point B, oh my god, made it so much easier for the ad clear and for the franticness of it all. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree. It was way easier. Uh, uh, War Priest is definitely the hardest. Like, by far. And it's not even yeah. that, it's not even that difficult. It's just that he's just a big bullet sponge, and we had a lot of issues with like, you know, him summoning the the thing early or the buffs not reading once we transferred them, and uh, you know, it was just that kind of stuff, you know. So, but it was yeah. it was fun. It was really fun. Uh, I even think totems is easier. Uh, totems is much easier because yeah. you don't have to have somebody constantly on the plate. You can step off for a few seconds to swap. Yeah. And you can accumulate over 10 stacks, yeah. which is probably the best change. I mean, there's been tons of times I've left with, you know, 20 or more stacks. Yeah. I think like I, I had like 15 or 16 stacks at one point. Joasis had uh, like I think he had twenty six or twenty seven stacks at one point. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's all it all predicates itself on how many kills you're able to get there. So, yeah. so yeah, I mean, it was it was I had a good time. It this is how I think this is how you change a raid for the better. I mean, you know, I think maybe is there there's still a challenge mode that you can activate, right? I mean, to... there's challenges to do, and there will be a master mode in a yeah. few weeks. Yeah, okay. Um, but as far as the uh, contest mode, that is that is gone. Yeah, that's that's what I meant, master mode. Which, I mean, we, we've all we, we've exhausted that ad nauseum, but uh, it's high time that that was put back into the game permanently. Yeah. Um, because challenge mode is just, it's, it's just that like, there's nothing else like it. GMs don't compare, uh, master mode raids don't compare. Just, we, we want challenges like that, especially people who only play PVE. Um, I'm pretty, you know, I don't really care because I'm not going to be doing them, but I know a lot of people who do want to do them. Yeah. So, yeah, but it was fun. I got, I didn't get anything really that good. I mean, I got a decent hand cannon and I got the heavy machine gun which is what was one of my favorite weapons in destiny one but... i've done three full runs of it and i have yet to get either of the two weapons that i want so yeah. i mean i want the pulse and the scout and obviously touch yep. but uh, yeah that's and I, I think that's how most of us are um you, you want those to be able to craft them and because you can at least just get them into your loot pool you can buy your guaranteed red border each week if you have to yeah uh, which still not a big fan of doing that, but it, if you have to, then it is what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I look forward to being able to craft those. They're the first two raid weapons where I've really gone, yeah, I think I want the patterns from these, uh, of the craftable raid weapons, I guess I should say. Um, Val had good weapons, but I think a lot of them were situational. Like Cataclysmic wasn't like, it was good, but it wasn't like this god tier thing right off the bat. It really took the linear fusion rework for us to be like, holy shit, this is a really, really good option. And I know we'd gotten some of that rework last year, and then we got a further buff to it with Witch Queen. It wasn't really until we figured out they were that linear fusions were king and haunted that it was like, oh, well, you should probably go get a god roll one of these. And... Some people, you know, some people obviously are able to craft, some aren't. Um, I was lucky that I had a decent roll on it to begin with, but uh, the only weapon I'm able to craft from the Vow of the Disciple is Insidious. That's the one I decided I wanted to go in on right away. And I'm glad I did, because it's great this season mm-hmm. with Arc 3.0. It, it's been good. Um, the other weapons that I had, though that I liked, I managed to get pretty decent rolls on them with the exception of Lubray's Ruin. Um, I got good roll, good static drops on everything, so I was like, okay, I, and I've... I, I'm gonna share some of my gripes with crafting, um, maybe later on tonight or next week. Um, but I think the raids really were a lot of my annoyances with the system. Yeah. And with a random chance, but Corey, let's 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 jump on in. Let's let's let's, let's deviate do. from the raid talk. Let's do it. Um, 
there it's just a real real light twab this week um uh, in fact speaking of uh speaking of weapon crafting we're right back to it uh we might as well just get weapon crafting out of the way clearly clearly bungie wants me to gripe about it tonight <laughs> um there's a reminder here at the top of the twab about the uh dares of eternity weapons uh, about how those are in he are those are in and um as a reminder, that means the BXR, the Wastelander, Half Truths, the other Traft, other half, not Traft. I don't know why it's Traft. I don't know. I, I was I was reading the list and saw the other, and then I read Half Truths while I was doing that. So, uh, pardon my dust and retraced path. Um, completing the Dares of Eternity Weekly Pinnacle Challenge will provide a guaranteed dares deep sight weapon once per week to always provide you with pattern progress until all patterns are unlocked this applies to all dares of eternity weapons except the other half we wanted to retain this weapon's rarity but also want to make sure if you're lucky and see it drop it will always feature deep sight so you can extract the pattern with that single acquisition let me let me let me fucking tell you something the fact that these were not auto unlocked for most of us or wasn't just like oh go get one pattern is an absolute travesty because a lot of us who got the 30th anniversary content went through, got the Vidmaster seal. Yeah. And if you wanted to get Vidmaster, guess what? You had to pretty much reset your rank with Xur. You had to get to rank 16. And this is far and away the absolute worst grind there has ever been in the game for reputation. Yeah, it makes Gambit right. it makes Gambit look like double crucible week. <laughs> okay, that's what it makes it look like. It makes it look like double crucible during momentum control. And or during mayhem. Like that's how much of a joke this is. Um, there was some discussion earlier in the uh, in the Discord about, you know, hey, let's go do some legendaires runs. I think Andre uh, was wanting to get in on some of those and I'm like, y'all have fun. I shan't be I ran four or five runs of dares. And I got nothing out of them. I got one red border out of four or five runs, so it may have been my guaranteed one if that wasn't a hot fix that had to be pushed. Um, I I shan't be doing that. There is nothing here that I'm like, yes, I have to recraft this weapon. Like, I enjoy the weapons here, but I don't think that I have to craft them, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah no, I, I agree. I mean, I think I think um, the weapons are cool. They're more of like a nostalgia hit than anything I would use out in the in the game, really. So I do like the I I, I do like that both the BXR and Retrace Path um, can roll with incandescent. I do enjoy that, but at the same time, like I don't need to slap it on every single gun out there. Yeah. Um, the only I reason why better... I would carry uh retrace path is if i was really itching to use a trace rifle but didn't want to use a uh, exotic one yeah i and i mean i think having legendary trace rifle options is really really good especially with how they've been getting champ mods and whatnot um i don't think it's wrong i have a good retrace path like i mean if i go in there and i get one to drop with incandescent then i'd be like okay cool i'm done i'm not going to worry about crafting but th this kind of comes back to a whole philosophy about crafting crafting is really there for those who have to have the absolute best of the best of the best and who have just an insane amount of time to burn on this game because realistically like i i play this game more than the average person i would say mm -hmm. and it is a struggle for me to unlock patterns like i got all the ones from season of the risen because that was the season Witch Queen came out. Like I was blowing through them. You could get your, you could buy your guaranteed ones every week. I think I finished it literally the week that Haunted came out is when I got the final pattern that I needed. I, I was like still missing one of the LMGs. I think at the very end of the season with Haunted, you had like three opportunities to get deep sided weapons each week, guaranteed ones. I'm still at least three or four patterns. Now a lot of those are at like three or four patterns. Period. But you can only guarantee yourself one that you can pick each week. The others are completely by random. And you have to keep doing the activities we've been doing for months. 
So it comes down to, okay, how badly do I want to be able to craft these in the future? Because when these weapons go away, this is probably how they stay in the game. Yeah. Um, and then I look at the title for this season, for example. And this is the first season, I think, where we've had to... You will have to craft every single weapon in order to get the title. And I don't think that's that's not really like hard to do with six months to go between now and the launch of Lightfall. What is to going to be difficult, though, is getting that in the three-month span if you want to get the associated bungee rewards. And that makes it really clear to me that like even these seasonal titles are really going to be there for those who want to like push themselves because that's not even like a hard challenge. That's just time consuming. Right. And there's not if you look at the Atlas, there's not a lot of things in there that are screaming, yes, you can come and uh, get multiple deep sites a week. Now <sighs> One th one change that they have done that I like, no longer have to level the weapon up in order to extract the pattern. You just delete it right away if it's a shitty roll. You just delete it right away and you get progress towards the pattern. The problem is they're just so rare. The seasonal weapons are so rare to drop. The dares weapons are rare to drop. The only things I see, uh, the, the raid ones are non-existent as far as I'm concerned. I've gotten one red border, and that was because we did the guaranteed chest on my third run, and it was for the hand cannon. So, yeah, I'm never going to use that. Mm -hmm. And I think that ultimately all of it's a little too rare. Like, I understand making the raid ones rare. That makes sense. Like, those, you're going to unlock those because you're punishing yourself week after week. Like, you are, you're doing this on all three characters. Uh, you're sprinting through it, things like that. Like, because you, you need the best of the best of the best of the best. For the rest of us, like, man, I'd be happy to be able to craft, like, one or two weapons. Um, there was a seasonal challenge back in Risen, I believe. One of the seasonal challenges... Uh, one of the weekly challenges was to craft a weapon from Battle of the Disciple. Was to completely get a pattern and craft. I haven't looked ahead this season yet to see if there's one for this, but I imagine there's not, because that did not go over well. I don't even know that there's one to finish King's Fall. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't even know if there's a weekly challenge to finish King's Fall, but I think this underscores... Just a lot of the core issues that I think I still have with weapon crafting after little. Uh, we've had a little more than six months now. We've had about six and a half months with weapon crafting. We knew there likely wouldn't be any major changes that would come to it, but I just I hope I hope that either next season or with Lightfall that there is a massive overhaul to like how many patterns you need. For example, like if you're going to keep the rarity. That's fine. Lower it to only needing like three patterns for it, though. Yeah, because I think expecting five patterns for every single weapon is just—it's bonkers. Like I again, I, I've played a little bit less this season than I probably would have by this point in a regular season. But I mean, I'm—I ran probably in terms of catch crashes and expeditions. I ran probably eight or nine seasonal activities back to back with our friend Ray uh, last week didn't see a single red border. And that's just kind of wild to me. Like, I'm not sitting here being, like, entitled, but I think if you run, like, three or four in a row, you should be guaranteed a red border drop of some kind. Like, you just spent 45 minutes in this playlist with, you know, nothing. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's never a good feeling. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I hear you. I think that you're going to have to do some changes to the method that they're acquiesced because some of them were actually, when Witch Queen came out, there were weapons that only required, you know, like two or three patterns. It was great. You know, there were some that required five, and we were like, oh my god, five? Right. I remember I was thinking like, oh, but that means that not everything will require five. Like, it's fine for the raid weapons to require that. And now you have this, like, I, I'm kind of baffled as to why do I get so many fucking red borders that are uncraftable? Like, I yeah. get the playlist weapons that drop, the 
Like, I mean, I'm getting red borders on, like, trials weapons and on iron banner weapons more than I am of the things I can actually craft. Right. That's just so infuriating. And then, I mean, you have things like, like here with the other half, like, really? Like, you're, st you're, you're still going to make it artificially hard to get. So, like, right. I, like it's, this it's tells been me almost a full year. This tells me they're making it harder to get <laughs> because it's a guaranteed like, red. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen, I, I've reset my rank with Xur, and I have seen two halves that entire time. One of them was literally on the first day of Dares of Eternity. Mm -hmm. It was the first day of the 30th anniversary I got one to drop. I did not realize that it was a rare drop until all the memes about Paul Tassie started. Yeah. Our friend Joe Asus still has never seen one, apparently. I mean, I've seen one. I don't even... I don't know if I have one. I, I guess I've never, like, really cared because I don't use swords, so... But, like, I didn't I didn't realize that it was so rare. Uh -huh. Like, I knew it was, like, harder to get than the other one, right? But, like, I guess I just didn't realize that it was... But... Let's see. I don't know. Just... Bungie, please, 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 please. Like, a combat is in such a good spot right now, but, like, playlist activities and crafting need some major love. Like, crafting we knew was going to have some growing pains. Yeah. And I, I don't want to, like... I'm not... I'm trying not to, like, overreact, right? Because, cra okay, crafting is fairly new. We really haven't gotten any major updates. I would say the being able to just shred the weapon to get the pattern which is something that we thought was going to happen from the beginning is here. Um, I think that you're going to have to overhaul like that. I don't know that we're going to get a big update with next season. I would imagine it'll probably be a little bit smaller or it'll be stuff preparing us for strand. Right. Yeah. Cause I, I have to think that's where the sandbox team is at is working on that. I don't know if there's a whole separate team that's working on crafting, but I would hope so. Like, if you're going to introduce another element into all this and another, like, you know, probably weapon foundry and whatnot, there has to be a way. Like, how, how is crafting going to work with weapons that will no longer be obtainable? Like, am right. I still going to be able to craft an Ostringer even though the Derelict Leviathan isn't going to be a location? Yeah. <laughs> the, these are questions. And then it's like, then it raises the question of, well, when it comes to the patterns, what do you do with those? Like, how, how are you going to punish players who didn't play for that year and be like, well, you guys can't ever get access to these or, oh, you them through Zer or something like that. Like, I, I think they're going to have to develop it to where you can buy, like, you can outright buy the pattern from Zer or from Banshee or even from the kiosk. Like, they're going to have to do that at some point. Right. And I understand not doing it now because there are titles that are still obtainable. And when it's stuff you can work on all year, like the haunted stuff, like, okay, I, I get the agreement for the haunted stuff. Um, I will likely have to do a lot more runs of the Leviathan activity, which I'm not looking forward to, uh, so that I can get some of my guaranteed drops. But... If that's the price I got to pay to make sure that, like, I because it, it's the whole it's the whole FOMO of it all. Yeah, like, I don't want to get into next year and suddenly, for whatever reason, bump in the night is the best rocket launcher in the game, and oh well, you left it at three out of five patterns, so you can't do anything. Like, motherfucker, I want the best weapon in the game, and you're telling me I can't get to it. Like that that represents one fear that I hadn't really thought about with crafting. And that has gone unaddressed. Like, we've heard that no more locations are being vaulted, but how are you going to handle patterns uh, right. and weapons? Yeah. Because we saw... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was disagreeing with you. Uh, I mean, like, we saw it last year with the, uh, the foundries that were available in material from, like, Chosen, Splicer, Hunt, and Lost. We've seen those weapons and, like, armor sets show up periodically at Xur. But even those are, like, few and far... It's few and far between. It's still, like, a lot of stuff from, like, years ago mm -hmm. that show up as the legendaries there. Yeah. Um, 
your your map starts selling patterns and these weapons like those weapons aren't sunset so can we like retroactively make it to where you know we could could we even do some quests like imagine if this season you had a quest where or not even not even a quest line but like when you open up your chest at the end of the uh, the pirate lord of the week or something when you open up that chest you get a pattern for a splicer weapon or for a hunt weapon or something like that like because that would that was you know spider and mithraxis seasons like okay we're going to we're going to do like between between the two we can give you every single pattern because there were only like eight or nine between the two seasons Imagine if you had done the haunted stuff and you could have unlocked, not only were you getting red borders, but you were getting patterns for chosen weapons as well. Yeah. I mean, that would be... It seems to me like that's the only way that you can really keep all the weapons in game. And I, I get wanting to go slow and only add a handful. Like, I'm not going to pretend to know what happens in the background of... Uh, of the game, like I only want to assume what happens with this spaghetti code, but it would seem to me that if this is going to be the way that you preserve weapons for the future and preserve gear for the future, it needs to be more accessible. And I mean, it, it, it comes up all the time. Like mods have to be that way too. Mods are going to have to be accessible, even if you just have to buy them from the, from like a specific mod kiosk down at Ada or something. Like, mm -hmm. there's no reason to make newer players. To like punish them because they sometimes they have to wait like eight months to get some of the best mods in the game. Right. Powerful friends went eight months without being in the game. Right. And then if you weren't on that week, you got screwed. Yeah. So like you you want to encourage build crafting and play your way and this and that, and like but you can't access half the stuff that makes the game so good. And like for a lot of higher end content, and I get that like new lights aren't going to be going into high end content right away, but even like some veteran players are like, man, I took a season or two off and I've just been screwed ever since. Yeah. I mean, you can't like, you can't take a full season off anymore. You know, you can't take a full season off. I mean, not even that. Like, you can't take a day. You, if you already lag behind, like, you can't take certain days off because. Yeah. Things are going to show up randomly in the rotation. Um, God forbid that you fall a few exotics behind for your class. So you're going to be grinding out those legendary law sectors. And I mean, I think there's plenty of material there. And I, I think it's good and dandy. But at a certain point, it has to be like, okay, this has been in there for a year. Let's make it slightly easier for the masses to obtain. You know, even if it's a rotating, like, I think this goes back to the argument that seasons should be a rotating 12-month thing. Like, it, the the content came out in Season 3 of The Witch Queen. It's going to leave in Season 3 of Lightfall. At the beginning of Season 3 of Lightfall, it gets vaulted. Mm -hmm. Instead of, because now I'm sitting here going, well, shit, I really like a lot of the weapons here, and... You know, I'm only two and a half weeks into the season, but I'm going, man, if I can't get, like, a bunch of red borders on some of this stuff, like, next season, okay, fine, but, like, next season's armory? Man, you have to grind that as soon as it comes up, because that content is going to go away three months after it launches. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's the most ridiculous thing. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's I, I could gripe all night about crafting and about the content vault. Yeah. I mean, so did you see did you see Paul Tassi tweet out that they need to release Destiny to year one or whatever? No, and, I didn't. Yeah, he said, you know, for players who want to catch up and, you know, the stuff would carry over to the main Destiny 2 game, like certain things that would that would carry over. Right. But mm -hmm. like. Uh, there's like, oh, there's a whole article. I didn't, I didn't read all of it, but like, it was really interesting the way he was putting it together. And he kind of goes into what you're talking about too, with some things. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I just think it's ridiculous that you just like, they're I, like, they claim they want to be a game that you can take off and play other games for a while and then come back when you're ready. But you're going to miss so many things. You're going to miss things now the way that like just the way that seasons are set up in general, you're going to miss things, you know? I think that as far as like the story goes that it, that 
it's absolutely right. I think you can take a season or two off, you can come back, you can experience the story. Cool, as long as you understand the timeline of when things get vaulted. And that's what I'm saying, like, if you make that just a little bit more streamlined, a rotating 12-month thing, like every like every season, stuff that's 12 months old gets vaulted. Um, I think that would go a long way for some people. Um, but I also think, like, we, we have to have conversations about important story points going away like haunted the mission where you go into the moon pyramid the very last mission of haunted you're in the moon pyramid fighting with keitel that's probably gonna be pretty important for lightfall like and you can't you can't do the mission where you fight callus like callus is the main enemy of lightfall like what the fuck the sever missions are going to be lost to time including you know zavala's you know, heart wrenching cutscene. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like crow crow stuff. Okay, we've been overcoming that, but like Keitel overcoming her traumas, like relating to Gaul, that's going to be gone. Like, I would imagine that the uh, the psyops battlegrounds will probably be added to the Vanguard playlist. I wouldn't be shocked to see uh, like maybe an expedition or two get added, mm-hmm. but. We've talked about it before. <clears throat> the uh, the exorcism mission will yeah. never be played again unless they figure out a way to unvault that. That's gone forever. Mm-hmm. Um, it's true, and that truly, like that, was something that was only in the game for a week. You had to be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's such a big. It's such a big part of the story. You know, it's such a massive part of it's... the story because you know we beat the witch queen a week later, and we're like, oh my god! So that's what happened right after the ritual. Yeah, it's almost like that the uh, exorcism should have been the first mission of the Witch Queen, almost. Like, or like a pro yeah, mission. Yeah, honestly. Now, you know? Like, I mean, maybe they'll bring that back when Lightfall comes out, but, like, that's definitely a huge story moment that if you missed it, you missed it. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know. It's... Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of, I kind of, I really feel like, especially with how many people jump back into Destiny with the Witch Queen and now seemingly Lightfall, right? Like, it just. You, you have to have that accessible for everybody, and it's just not. So, I guess my other question would be to Bungie, like, what do you plan on doing about this? Because clearly they have to know that it's a problem. And. I, we can't just keep sitting here and saying, well, they'll fix it down the road. They'll fix it with Goliath. Goliath, they'll fix it. We don't even know what the fuck Goliath is. Like, how are we going to fix something that we don't know what it is intended to be? Yeah. So, like, I can sit here and give you the benefit of the day all day long, and I commend you for saying that no more expansions are being vaulted. I, I, I commend you for saying that. That should mean that no more strikes are getting taken out, no more raids. Um, uh, Great. That does make me pretty firmly believe that the stuff that is still there, they managed to work on with the new lighting before Beyond Light came out. Um, at least if it was, you know, the I think they had to prioritize, okay, Earth, Moon, and Nessus is what we're going to prioritize here. Mm-hmm. Um knowing that those were going to stick around, but the fact that you can play everything from Shadowkeep forward, it's like, well, but we can't play Forsaken, and we can't play D2 Vanilla. Like, I don't, I personally don't care that you can't play Curse of Osiris or Warmind. That doesn't really bother me. The Black Armory being gone, I just want the weapons back, honestly. I just want my Blast Furnace. Joker's Wild, yeah, there was some great Drifter lore there, but the lore books are auto-unlocked for everyone now after they've been in the game. Opulence? What story are you really missing from Opulence? You're not missing anything, really. You're missing right. the Bad Juju secret mission, which I do. I am upset that that's gone. Yeah, I don't think that was hurting anything. Bad Juju secret mission is gone. You're missing the Menagerie, and you're missing Crown of Sorrow. Like realistically nobody was doing raids and that's just that's the point that we got to like people aren't out there running last wish all the time like yes there are those of us who still want 1k very badly no one's really running last wish though like people are running garden just to get divinity and they're like i'm done 
I'm yeah. done. Like it's an annoying raid. I'm out of here. Right. Um, it's really deep stone forward. Even deep stone, I don't see like a whole lot of LFG posts for anymore because it's two years old. Yeah. You're doing the more recent content. I see, you know, Vogue and beyond. And like sometimes during featured raid weeks, yeah, that can fluctuate. People will want to go do them for the pinnacles or, you know, for a shot at eyes or 1K or something. But, like, the content that's in the game needs to be content people actually play. So, like, I enjoy that all the dungeons, as they exist now, will stay in the game, are not going away at least until final shape. Because it makes it sound, it makes it seem like they want you to be able to play everything from Shadowkeep through the end of Final Shapes content year without vaulting anything else. Yeah. And honestly, if they were smart, they would say, "I know that they, I know Bungie's committed time and time again, saying, well, you know, Destiny Two is it. That's it. Like we're, it's Destiny Two. We don't have plans for anything else. Like, man, you just have to hope they're lying." Let Destiny 2 stay like this. Like, I don't know, figure out some way for our vault to be carried over. You know, kind of like Paul's idea of a Destiny 2 year one game. Like, figure out a way for our stuff to come over. And, hey, if you want to go play those activities, you can go play them. Like, your stuff won't go back with you, but you'll always have your things in D2. Yeah. But your stuff will come for Like, your stuff will jump forward. And... I think you're going to have to do that at some at some point. You're going to have to do that, or because I think we're getting to a point where these consoles are powerful enough to handle it. Like treat it like an actual MMO. Yeah, you're going to have to base. It's going to have to do some unique things. Like you're going to have to base things in the cloud. You're going to have to say, okay, you don't have to have everything installed, and that's okay. Like have a have a base download of like the two or three most recent expansions. And all the content that entails, so the dungeons and the raids from those, and, like, force everybody to have the strikes and the crucible maps, but, like, everything else, separate downloads. Have, like, have you know, okay, this is something that will install all the raids. Here's something that will install the story from those other ones. Because that was a big part of what got vaulted, was all the story content, with all the dialogue and the cutscenes and things like that. That's what was taking up the room. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a way to. I mean, games like Call of Duty and Halo and Gears, like they all do this. Like, there's games that do this. Now, I mean, granted, they're all not as big and dense as Destiny is, but like, there's games out there that do, you know, segment certain parts of the games out. Where then, yeah, if okay, I played the Red War campaign. I don't need, you know, all that dialogue or cutscenes or, you know, I don't need that. So I'll install it or whatever, right? And I don't know. I just, I know we talk about this a lot, but like, it still really bothers me that like, I can't just go back. Cause I've, I've gotten like two or three people to buy the game recently and they're going to jump into shadow keep and be like, what's, what's going on? You know, like they don't know. I will say as far as like a jumping on point, I don't love Shadow Keep, and I think if Shadow Keep's where you're starting, you may be driven off from the game before you even get going. Yeah. Um, as far as like a narrative beginning, as long as you played Destiny One, or at least know somewhat of what happened in like vanilla D One, mm-hmm. I think that's actually not a horrible place to start. You're landing on a location that's familiar on the moon, mm-hmm. and oh, the hive are still on the moon, and this and that. Like, whoa, what the fuck is this pyramid thing? Yeah. And I think that's a decent place to start because as far as the overarching narrative of where we are right now, as much as I like the Red War and Forsaken campaigns, what relevance do they really have? Like, the only thing that you would have to answer for someone from D1 is, and this is assuming that they played the Taken King, Mm -hmm. is where's Cade 6? Because... I mean, if you didn't play the content that's gone now or play D1, you don't know who Kate is. Right. Kate means nothing. Yeah. Like, I have I've know people who have literally jumped in and not done Forsaken at all, and they're like, who the hell is Kate? Yeah. And, or who played Forsaken just before it got, I literally had a friend who played it a month before it got vaulted, and he's like, uh, I'm glad I played that because otherwise I wouldn't have known who this guy is. And like the game's almost removed any and all mentions of Kate at this point. Yeah. And that's like, 
you removed probably the most recognizable character from the series. It's yeah. just, I, I don't know. I, I have a lot, again, I have a lot of gripes about the content vault, and I don't know, maybe we get closer to Christmas or something, and we have a better idea of what's coming with Lightfall, maybe they'll have addressed patterns and vaulting the patterns and things like that by that point. Yeah. Um, we can uh, we could do another gripe session around the campfire, but <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I I think I th- at the very least what they could do is like if somebody's jumping into D two for the first time, they could have like the like the cool animated like the cool still cutscenes that they've been doing for seasons, right? They could totally just give you like a you know up to Shadow Keep, you know, uh, here's what happened, here's what's not here, right? And just tell like uh like they did at the beginning of the showcase, right? That that really nice kind of reintroduction of the world to people, right? Like I feel like they could do that at least. If you're not gonna bring back this content, like explain the Red War, explain Cade's death, explain, you know, how Aldrin became Crow. Those are all like points that you could narratively do in some sort of cutscene slash animated visual novel type thing, you know? I don't know. Yeah. Um, and we've, we've also long said there needs to be at least, there needs to be a, a feeder where you can go in and watch the, like you said, the old animated cutscenes or even like old story cutscenes. You need to be able to watch those yeah. uh, from in there. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that would require anything to like, hard i think you could watch that in the cloud pretty easily mm-hmm. that could just be streamed into your game um just like okay you got it i mean you already have to be connected to the internet to play the game anyways it might cause you some trouble on like a base ps4 or a uh, vcr xbox one but yeah well i saw xbox series s for 227 dollars today so you know <laughs> yeah, I've, the series S has been uh, readily available for months now, and has been uh, pretty affordable. Even PS fives, um, it was noted by uh, Matt Piscatella earlier, uh, guy who works for uh, MPD and uh, always posts the numbers for us uh, whenever they come in. Uh, he was saying like the last six weeks have been the best time ever to buy a next gen console because yeah. like the PS five horizon uh, forbidden West bundles have been freely available. Like it's in PS stock direct right now on PS direct. It's been in stock on PS direct. Walmart has had it for weeks. Uh, Best buy has had pretty good availability with them. Like I'm debating if now is when I'm going to go ahead and grab my disc one because I bought a digital one when it came out. Is this where I bite the bullet and finally buy my disc one or what? And it's like that that supply is going to get a lot harder to come by in a couple of months. Like I would say by by this time next month, it's going to be tightening up a bit. And then after Black Friday, like it's going to be non-existent. Like that's that's where most of this isn't already out there is going to at this point but there's no there's kind of no excuse like i understand not being able to afford it like affording a game console is not a priority right now like with how expensive everything else has gotten you know fuel food rent i mean god my rent is astronomical now um you know things like that are obviously way more important but the consoles are pretty readily available at this point. So like you can't, you can't even say like, Oh, well, you know, I, I just can't find them. Like now, if you can't find them because you don't have the money when they're in stock, that's a completely valid thing. Totally understand up. Like a laptop that I was talking to Corey about before we got started, it, it has a 3060 in it and it's, you know, nine ninety nine on Best Buy. Like there, there are options out there. Of course, PC is like the higher end, but at a certain point, like if you're not if you're not playing in sixty frames, I think that you're I think you're doing yourself a disservice because I honestly don't know how this game is still running. Like it's still having to be optimized to be able to run at thirty frames, and that's hard. That's rough with how much stuff is going on on screen now. I and it's only going to get worse. Yeah, that's only going to get worse, and I think it's only going to hold the game back more and more. Like I think Witchwing gave us a glimpse of what they would like to do in some of these combat scenarios, mm-hmm. but they're ultimately still hamstrung by having to make this work on tech that was developed in you know 2010. Ultimately, yeah. So, 
I mean, because that's what goes into these consoles. Like these consoles have tech that were like, that was like top of the line a year, year and a half before they came out. Yeah. So you got to think back to the R and D phase. Like we we always think like, oh, I know I do it. Like oh, well, you know, it, it can't. It, surely if you have like a PS4 Pro or a, a One X, like it's not too bad. And then you remember, oh, this has to run on the other stuff too. Yeah. It's uh. <laughs> It's a problem. Yeah. So, anyways, that that's enough griping about that. We uh, we don't have much else left in the Schwab. There is a uh, there's a Lightfall Collectors Edition uh, preview video that's up in here. If you haven't watched it yet, uh, with uh, a look at the uh, the Puka that comes in it, Elsie's Vex Fish, as we've been calling it for two years. Uh, it is in fact called a Puka. It's wild that it's going to take. It took a little over two years for us to circle back from the Beyond Light teaser video, which is where we saw it, to it actually being in game. Yeah, this was a no brainer for me though to uh, to pick up. I know. I'm thinking about it. It's still available. It's still available. There's not a lot. I'm actually kind of surprised that it stayed in stock as long as it is. Like for me, it clearly means they made a significant amount more than they did for Witch Queen or for um, Shadow Keep, Shadow Keep and Beyond Light. Like Shadow Keep and Beyond Light sold out the day of, I believe. Yeah, those sold out very quickly. Um, Witch Queen, they did two extra runs, I think. Yeah, they did a run. They're doing a, a run this after. fall. Okay, they've done a they've done a few runs then because the original collector's edition went up, went out of stock within twenty four hours because I wasn't able to get or less than twenty four hours because uh, Colonel Panic was able to get one. I was not. They reopened pre orders a day or two later, and uh, were like, "Yeah, you won't be guaranteed yours on launch day. It's no code. It's you know physical goodies only." Um, so I bought that <clears throat> and then it came back around right before launch. Uh, cause a couple of you wrote in and told us that, uh, when we talked about it, you were able to secure, pre- you were able to secure orders. So they, they've definitely done some reprints of that. Um, it seems like they went ahead and judged based off the amount of orders they had for, uh, light or not lightfall. God, lightfall's not even out yet of, uh, the witch queen. Okay we want to have a lot more units available right away. Like I would imagine the ones with codes, that's it. Once those are gone, those are gone. Like the physical one or the, uh, the physical only are probably the ones that they're making like just gobs of. That's what I ordered personally. Mm -hmm. Um, I ordered my uh, digital version through the Xbox store. Yeah. Uh, That's what I did. Cause I have just gobs of Microsoft points. But uh, very, uh, very excited about this. So some of the stuff that's included in this is going to be a lot of fun. There's a couple of physical um, pamphlets or booklets. There's a letter from Zavala. There's uh, notes from Keitel on Callus' psyche. Uh, Ikora's notes about Osiris's vision of Neptune. That feels like a spoiler, but um, the puka is in there. Uh, and uh, the Lightfall Collector's Edition will help Guardians understand the minds of our enemies and hope for what's to come. Um, that just sounds absolutely wild. Um, the Puka statue has LED lights. There's a letter from Zavala and a lot of goods to prepare you for battle. Um, yeah, I hey, Bungie Collector's Editions. Two thumbs up. I loved my Ghost Edition of D1. I always liked the Halo Collector's Editions that they did back in the day. I was never able to get one as a kid, so uh, I try to buy them whenever I can now because I have disposable income like that. That is that is honestly it for the job. This was a nothing job. This is a nothing job that we spent an hour talking about, by the way. I mean, that's fine, though. I mean, <laughs> because we didn't really talk I, about the job, though. We were just because I can't get over the fact that I can't get red border weapons. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, want, I want to touch briefly. I want, I want to touch briefly on it um, before we head in the lore corner. Uh, Arc 3.0. Now that we've had some time to play around with Arc 3.0, uh, Corey, what are you what are you feeling about it as a Titan? How do you like your built-in dodge function that you get to have now? 
Yeah, it's weird. The dodge function is weird because usually I'm just used to running away or throwing up a barricade. This mm-hmm. this adds some agility to the Titan. Although I do kind of feel like a lot of Arc 3.0 is built around like they weren't kidding when they said Arc is driving you and you are not driving Arc because like I feel really out of control. I feel like I have to like aim where I want to go and hope that I can steer myself there, you know? Uh, but also, like I said a couple weeks ago, I'm so glad that the week before Arc 3.0 dropped, I grinded for three or four hours to try to get that, uh, <laughs> get a uh, falling star, and they just give you one as a titan. Well, I mean, to be fair, it's probably not a great roll that they give you out of the chest. Yeah, it was a it was a sixty five for me. Oh, okay. I listen. All I saw was liar's handshake in the hunter one, and uh, automatically deleted it. So, yeah, well, uh, I will be claiming falling star on my titan though, because that is the only piece that I uh, want on my titan. I'm missing a lot of armor, but that's the only one I actually care about. This was a great idea. Those chests, like I really. We'd gotten ones for Void and Solar as well. Yeah, I I kind of I wonder if that'll be something they do next season. You know, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. Possibly, but yeah, Arc, Arc Man. Uh, I'll just tell you, using that uh, using that new Hunter Super is fucking wild. I love that thing. Uh, throwing it at an enemy and watching them run around. I, I did an LFG run of King's Fall a couple nights ago, and somebody hurled at the War Priest, and he was just running around with it in his head. Yeah, uh, it was it was very funny to look at, but it feels so good to finally be able to use art in PVE content as a hunter. That's never been a thing across two games that we've been able to do. So for the first time in eight years of Destiny. Eight fucking years of this game, I've actually been able to use my ARC subclass in endgame content, and it feels amazing. I don't know that I like it as much. I I think it's a lot of fun for Hunters. I definitely think it's the most fun rework that we've gotten, and it's clear to me that across all three classes, the Hunters really were the star of all three reworks. In a lot of ways, because they massively overhauled so much of our identity. But, man. Uh, for the hunters who were bummed out that all Void was about was your invisibility and whatnot, uh, this is the exact opposite. This is all about just dashing up into someone's face. Our hunters are terrorizing the Crucible again. It's part of what's made uh, Eruption slightly infuriating for me this week has been all of the Ark Hunters. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot. Like, well, and it doesn't help that Raiju's Harness is currently broken, because I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of the staffs. I'm not seeing... Well, I'm not seeing a lot of the uh, the spears. I'm seeing a lot of the staffs, because Raiju's Harness, currently, if it's equipped, gives you double the length of your super. Because it's bugged with Arc 3.0, so that's why so I'm running it. Um... And you're damn near invincible while wearing it also. Like, there... Our arc is going to have to majorly be tuned for Hunters in the coming weeks. Um, especially as it relates to Crucible. Like, if this is still up when Trials comes around next weekend, good luck. Good luck, everyone. Uh, I, sh- I shan't be participating. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm dead serious. I genuinely don't know if I'm going to be going into... Uh, into trials this this season until uh, some of that's sorted out. Um, I really like the power fantasy, though. Um, I think that's something that they've done really good across all three classes with all three elements now is, well, all four, if you include stasis, is the power fantasy. And that's why like, I've become slightly apprehensive going back and watching the Lightfall trailer again or like watching the explanation about Strand. It's like, how does Strand... Because I want to see the abilities in action a lot too, right? Which we we've only seen snippets of. So I'm judging it. I'm judging a book by its cover, essentially. But it's like, man, how is this going to live up to the power fantasy of the other ones? Right. Um, I imagine that's something we probably. I, I think they're going to go dark on Lightfall, probably, and on Strand in particular, until this season is over. Um, 
December 6th is when the season ends. That feels a little bit late to start telling us about Strand, but at the same time, it almost tees them up perfectly because you're going to have two weeks before they break for Christmas. They take, uh, I think, two, three weeks off from Schwab's for Christmas. Yeah. And they come back and they've got just six weeks of nonstop building the Lightfall, and it's out. Yeah. Like, basically half the season, they get to just, like, take off from giving us updates. Like, the team gets to get all rested and whatnot. I would imagine there's going to be a brand new trailer at the Game Awards that week. Um, I'd be very surprised if that's when we did not get another death look at this. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it'll be... I don't think they'll give us the in-depth look there. But I would imagine that... Yeah, so Game Awards takes place on December 8th. Um, That's two days after the new season launches. I can't imagine there isn't going to be a trailer of some kind, whether it's live action or it's just the second... Like, it's the actual, like, prologue trailer. Um, Kind of like how we got the Witch Queen one with Season of the Lost dropping last year. And everyone's like, oh, we got that six months ahead of time. Like, yeah, we got that six months ahead of time because it was six months. Yeah. Um, I would also like, I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that this possibly gets delayed. So maybe that's why they're not showing us a lot too, is they don't want that information out there for so long. Right. Yeah. Um, but you have to figure that next season probably ties into it. And like once next season comes out, then that's when they can start talking a little bit more. Um, I just, I think we're in such a good place with all four subclasses. We're going to get to enjoy one, like one and a half seasons with it, all tuned up once they deploy, you know, arc fixes and whatnot. And then everything's going to be thrown out of whack by another new power. Yeah, do you think... We and can... presumably another in, I would say presumably another in the final shape as well. Do you think we get a... Uh... <laughs> Another stasis situation where, like, Strand is just way overpowered in a lot of ways to the point where it annoys people in PvP and other areas. I think it's hard to say until we actually get to see what the exact powers are going to be. I think until we're actually seeing, like, the full kits that you can make, it's really hard to say yes or no to that okay yeah i that's that's the boring answer but i would probably lean more on the side of no because there's four other kits to work against it in things like the crucible like my main question right now is is strand going to be viable for end game content because it doesn't seem like it from you know, a surface level. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I wonder if it's like, it just, I don't know. I, we, I mean, we got to see more, but it just doesn't seem like it has the, like the oomph that the other ones do. Like stasis came out and they were like showing all kinds of aggressive, like moves well, so- and stuff and strand. They're like grappling hook and Titans get another punching super. So I, I would say I would say with Strand or with uh, with Stasis, we saw Stasis in the cinematic trailer. We didn't really get a whole lot of it shown to us when the reveal happened. We really only started getting the information about the supers and stuff after the game got delayed. Because remember, it got delayed from September to November, and it was at Gamescom or what would have been Gamescom time um, back in 2020. When I think they did, did they did digital games Gamescom stuff that year that we actually got to see the supers and such. They gave them each a dedicated blog. We got to see the the kits, like the melees and the grenades and stuff. And that's I think that's okay. Yeah, I think it's okay because that was three months before launch, <laughs> like. I think about three months out is when you can start going into that stuff in more detail. Like we got void was a different situation because void already existed in game. Like to give us all that info back in like September of last year. Okay. Like strand. I think they want to focus more on the reworks now and knowing that they don't have anything to rework or fine tune 
next season in season 19 they can say okay here you go here here's like a tease of strand like i could easily see that last swap right before the holiday saying boom here's a big info dump on strand here's something for you to salivate over for the christmas holidays and then come back and start answering the questions dropping the vidox things like because i mean end of january like last week of january first week of february is probably when we're getting the vidoc for a light fall and by then we'll have a very clear idea of where the story is going. Maybe how Strand plays into it. I would not be shocked to see a weapon or two use Strand ahead of time. Like, I have a feeling it's going to be introduced. Like, we already have the Quicksilver Auto Rifle. And that, to me, is here for a reason. There's a reason why we're getting that weapon now. Not like a story reason, but like, we're getting some of the Cloud Runners tech now. Mm-hmm. So I can only hope that we see some strand infused gear ahead of time. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be great. Um, let's see. Um, so I mean, that that's I guess like circling back around to arc. Just like it's a lot of fun. It's a lot movement based. I'm not a super aggressive player, so it's not really benefiting me too much in PvP right now. But I am really enjoying it in PVE. Uh, and I think having something like the uh, Catch Crash and the uh, Expeditions has been a lot of fun for that. I think it's been a great place to just play around with a sandbox. Yeah. So, um, I guess we're going to, I guess let's go to Lore Corner. Lore Corner. I love it. Lore Corner. Um, Lore Corner. So I'm going to pick two that I hope we haven't talked about yet. Um, the beginning of the season is always difficult to know. Like what It's funny, the beginning and the end of the seasons are always the hardest. Like I'm going to have to start keeping a running dock of everything I talk about in seasons so that we're in a particular season so I don't like sit here and have to like second guess myself live on the air. Uh, but this first one is the Skeleton Key. I, of course, our uh, seasonal artifact. Commander, the skeleton key is a relatively sophisticated piece of elixir technology from the period immediately preceding the whirlwind. The key was built to interface with a surprising array of tech via an adaptable resonance matching behavior reminiscent of some golden, known Golden Age systems, making it invaluable to elixir pirates and other spacefaring ner wells With some optimization, it could even be used to enhance certain pieces of armor and weapons of elixir manufacture. In all, an intriguing item indeed. Now I would be remiss if I did not mention that this report would have been completed sooner had there not been repeated interference from a certain individual to whom I shall only refer to as Mr. D. The item in question was repeatedly removed from secure Vanguard premises by Mr. D, who was later witnessed using the skeleton key to interface with several mechanisms in the annex, including a discontinued power generator, a deciphering core, and several appliances used in the preparation of food. When confronted, Mr. D replied that he wished to goose them and showed no interest in following the proper channels for access to the restricted cryptography technology. When I later personally brought Mr. D the first sheaf of the necessary paperwork, he reacted with a series of gestures that are considered obscene across three different cultures. I was rudely instructed to take it easy, referred to as his brother, piled with various illicit refreshments, and when I rebuffed all attempts to placate me, he suggested we settle this in Gambit, an invitation I vehemently declined. Needless to say, I will be filing another complaint against Mr. D with Ikora once she has restored my access to the grievance systems. Master Rahul. I think this is fucking hilarious. Yeah, it's pretty funny. This is great it's because funny. it's it, it, clearly Mr. D is drifter. Yeah, he's called, hey brother, take it easy. <laughs> like this, this is great. Settling this in Gambit and Rahul denies uh, declines. Like even they don't want to play Gambit. <laughs> it's canonical that people don't want to play Gambit. Um, it's hilarious. Yeah, th this is great. This is definitely a different skeleton key than uh, we used in D... Correct me if I'm wrong, I believe we used skeleton keys in D1 in Prison of Elders. We did, yeah. We did! Uh, so, definitely a nice uh, change of pace there. I always love whenever we get the artifact and you get to look at it up front. But also, like, things are referenced from previous seasons. 
for example, in some of the dialogue this season, uh, Mithrax talks about using his splicer gauntlet, which, of course, we used in Season 3 last year. We used it during Season, season of the Splicer, its namesake. Um, so I always like looking at these, and I like that you can go back and look at them at any time and pull, you know, pull the lore from them and read them. Things like that. But this is cool, like a little piece of Elixney tech. It's kind of like the Cabal, like we're getting more and more into their cultures as they become more ingrained into the city. Like the last city isn't just the last city for humanity, it's kind of the last bastion for anything standing against the darkness at this point. Um, so I, I think that's that's pretty cool. And then the other one that we're going to read is the Speed Metal Shell. This is the ghost shell that is part of the pre-order pack for Lightfall. I should have missed this speck of a station on the way to Pluto, except that for all it lacks in size, it's surprisingly warm, almost a full degree above the background of space, practically a flare. My ship's engines whir through cool down as I step down, cool down as I step into the landing bay. It's stock design. Years ago, I could probably tell you which floor plan it used from Fabridine's showroom, Ishtar registration, probably an observatory forgotten from the collapse. But what's waiting past the hatch isn't shock. Atmo gear, shiny and new. Someone's been here since the collapse. I unshoulder my rifle and warm up her power cell. A handprint. Grease and dust pressed sharp against the white wall. Size for a cabal, but... Five fingers. There's more. A smear of rippling silver and broken bits of something familiar. Too big for a gun, but maybe for that hand. A rustle behind me breaks the silence, and I fire. Don't shoot, Exo, a small voice begs. I, I, I'm just Toki. Her glowing lens pokes out from behind the doorframe. A ghost, why are you here? I heard the call. The call? To a guardian? There's no humans this far out. Well, I know that now. Her body ripples in the light, looking oddly familiar. What's up with your shell? You like my silver? My friend showed it to me. Another ghost was crazy enough to come out here with you? No, ma'am. I met her here. Her fins coax something into view, a beautiful little mess of ribs and sails, with six bright eyes appraising me. I reach for it, and Anna's tiny hands pull me into a hug. Her dress is dirty, and she's crying. Grandfather's totally going to freak, I think, as I pet her hair. It's okay, I'll help. I start as Toki's friend slithers into my hand and coos. I'll help, I realize. This is... We can we can infer this is Elsie. <clears throat> this is Elsie encountering her puka for the first time. The question for me becomes: Who the fuck is the ghost? Right. Who, who does the, the ghost, ghost team up with? Like, and if the ghost actually shows up in game with this shell, I'm gonna freak out because I think that's fantastic. Um, I really really like this. So Toki is the name of the ghost. Toki, we can assume, probably takes some sort of, like, story role. Maybe. Who knows? Um, we've, you know, been led astray before by things from pre-orders. Um, but I think this is just an interesting bit of it, because it's clearly showing Elsie's first encounter with it. And the question is, where does this take place at in the timeline? Are we going to get it retconned to where Elsie's little Vex fish wasn't with her during the events of Beyond Light? Because he they never actually showed it in game, I don't think. I don't even know if it was in the cutscene that we had gotten before the game came out when it was put in game. I don't when they see the pyramid, I don't know that the that the thing was actually with her. Yeah. I have actually no, I actually genuinely do not remember. Yeah, I don't... So, I would be very interested if it if it's not there in-game, then it was something... Because I, I want to say that Luke... I think it was one of the last things Luke Smith really talked about when it came to the story, and it was like, well, that's more of a concept of something we want to explore. Maybe we'll circle back to it, maybe we won't, is essentially what he said. And I think that the fact that they're coming back to it now, like this makes me wonder this either takes place just before Lightfall, or this takes place. I mean, this could take place in a, in one of the alternate timelines that Elsie's been in, or this is taking place 
directly in the lead up to Lightfall, like it seems like Elsie is going to have to play another role in the story, even though she's not in the key art. She's probably the one who her and Osiris together probably alert us to the existence of the colony on Neptune. <laughs> because she would be the only one who's actually been out there. Yeah. And Osiris, I mean, we're assuming that Osiris is part of it, part of partially because we know of the description from Entirely possible. Uh, maybe Marasov's Awoken have been out there. Maybe Petra and Mara have been out there or something. But I think the most likely explanation is that it's either somebody who's dead or it was Drifter. Because Drifter's the only one who's been out that way that we know of who survived. My ultimate dark horse, though, that I really, really wish it would be, I would love for it to be Fenchurch. I think that would be absolutely amazing to bring like some throwaway lines full circle he's already part of the investigation dossier that's in the uh witch queen collector's edition i would really love to see him in the flesh by the end of the series by the end of d2 i would love to see fen church in the flesh yeah i mean i think that would be pretty cool and we know he's out there with Mara, or he's been out there with Mara and Petra at some point mm -hmm. with whatever those two are doing currently. Yeah. So well, that's Lore Corner for tonight. Lore Corner, everybody. Lore Corner. Yes. The uh, the speed metal shell and the skeleton key. Um, we have a bunch of questions tonight, though, that we need to get to before we get out of here. We do. We have a, quite a few well, we have, I don't know, quite a few. We have, we have, we have, uh, we have one, two, three. We have five questions. We have five questions oh, is, tonight. It's quite a bit. So uh, our first question comes from Tiger Jesus 64 My question, would you rather have every strike in Destiny come back or every Crucible map? Uh, I think that Corey and I both have the exact same answer I, here, and it's a no-brainer. It's every strike. It's every strike. I, like... <laughs> That's I, not even yeah, I, I, could, I could give I could give a shit if cr every Crucible map comes back. Because let me tell you, a lot of the maps I don't like to begin with. Yeah. I mean, I don't... I, I would I, like I, to see if... I don't even play don't, Crucible all that much anymore. You know, like, I just... I do. It's just been like... it's been, And I, I, I understand the basis of the question. I, I get what, uh, what Tiger's getting at here. Uh, I would like to see some more maps come back, but at the same time, like most of the ones that were vaulted are ones that I have not lost any sort of sleep over. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with them staying where they are, uh, going away, or, you know, uh, for example, the, the combined arms map on the moon from D1 actually is where the Shadow Keep campaign starts. Yeah. So I'd like, if you were going to do something like that, like I wouldn't mind seeing something like that or. Um, kind of like how some of the old Lost Sectors have been reused for uh, some of the seasonal content. It's just been like reskinned. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Um, I think that would be a tasteful way to bring some of these back. They're already they're going to bring back a map or two like every other season, I believe. Still, so we're probably going to get that sooner rather than later. Strikes, I imagine, require a lot more manpower to bring forward. Um, otherwise, I I'm convinced we would have the Moon ones back. Um, I'd still like to see every strike, and I still do think that every strike will come forward at some point. Yeah, uh, I mean, bookmark I this like... in 2024. Tell me how I'm wrong. Yeah, well, you know, I'm counting on you, Trevor. Trevor, <laughs> Trevor, don't worry. He's gonna, he's gonna, just gonna have a shirt with all your nicknames on there, but at some point, and then in the, right in the middle, it's just gonna smack dab say you're wrong. Uh, probably, probably. Um. Our second question comes to us from Andre. Uh, with the knowledge, guns, and armor we have now in Destiny 2, what are three moments, bosses, or events you guys would go back to and redo? And why is it Skolas or Tanix? First off, it's not Tanix. Fuck Tanix. I'm tired of Tanix. 
if I never see that dude again, it'll be too soon. Uh, I think I've been pretty clear in my desire to see Prison of Elders come back and fight Skolas again um, with the D2 arsenal and with our uh, 3.0 abilities. Um, if I had to pick two others, though... Um, Oof, this is actually a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be. Because um, Oryx would have been on the list, but Oryx is now in the game. So we all saw how that one went. Yeah, Crota is... Crota, I feel like, is an easy target. Like, Crota and Axis are probably the other two answers I have. Like, I just I want to see how the D1 guys would stack up against what we have now. Um, the pro like Because the problem is... I don't think any of the villains or any of the raid bosses that we fought in D2 so far I would really care about fighting with a different kit. Like Galran, I really doubt I would change much about the Galran fight honestly with what we have now. The Kallus fight would be even easier than it was at the end, which it would, you could two-plate the guy by the end for God's sake. Yeah. Spire of Stars, you just got up in their face and Wardcliff coiled. Uh... What is it? Argos? Argos wouldn't die any differently. Insurrection Prime, we fight many ones of those all the time. Yeah, I, I mean, I really, I gotta pull from D1. I gotta pull Skolas, uh, Crota, and Axis up off the bench. Yeah, Axis is... I, I'm i really a interested bitch. to see... You know, especially from like a story standpoint, I, like they're bringing back they're bringing back an old raid next year too, right? They said so. Like, yeah, I mean, in terms I, of like, I, and at this point, like we talked about it a little bit in the spoiler cast. Like, I think we can safely pencil in that it's Wrath of the Machine. Yeah, I mean, a it makes sense from like a story standpoint. A strand is kind of like an involved version of Siva, or like a you know, right? And right. like, yeah, and that oh, man, I. I, I love Wrath of the Machine. I know it's like a, not like the best raid or anything, but I just I think it's so dumb and fun. I see it. It's very revered in D one circles still. Yeah. Like it's that and King's Hall were like neck and neck for a lot of people. Um, Wrath of the Machine, fun fact, still the only raid I've never truly beaten. I was one ball throw away from finishing. Uh, good old Axis off. Those stupid balls, man. Like, that's that's where my uh, my clan name, the Wrong Direction Pirates. That's where it came from. Was because uh, my girlfriend had the final ball and uh, she whiffed it. She spiked it down into the pit, and we all wiped. Well, yes. so we immortalized it. Even though she didn't play Destiny anymore, we immortalized her forever. Five years ago. Um, yeah. So C Corey, who would you bring back? Who would you who would you want to fight with the current sandbox? Essentially. Oh, jeez. Uh... I mean, I don't really want to fight Crota again, to be honest with you. Um, I don't either, but I needed a third. I needed a third answer. Yeah, hmm. that's the problem. Like, there's not there's not dungeons to pull from for D one, and it's like a strike boss is well a strike boss. Like, I guess I could sit here and say Rockets McDick Face from the uh, land tank on Mars. Mm, gross. Nope. Pass. Yeah, uh, Sepix Prime has already gotten his ass whooped about a hundred different times by me. Yeah, Tanix has been killed in like four different incarnations. The I Dark mean, Blade think, is back as the Light Blade. I think it would be hilarious to bring Tanix back again. Uh, but... Honestly, I, w I would just quit. I would quit. <laughs> put him in a Lost Sector, man. That would be the funniest thing. Just put him in a fucking Lost Sector. Yeah. You know what would be kind of cool, though? honestly to to bring back like so so this is this is bosses from just from anything right like yeah um i mean i think i think the shield brothers would be a really cool that's true i feel that's like true. you know what a cool way to bring them back would be would be as like a a raid encounter almost so it's funny that you bring up the Shield Brothers, Corey. Have you played this week's story mission yet? I was going to play it after we. I was going to play it on Tuesday, but we ended up doing uh, whatever the Pinnacle Dungeon is this week, Prophecy, and so other things. Yeah. So minor spoilers. Um, That's fine. It's not actually them, but uh, the pirate lords that you fight this week are two Cabal 
commanders who have the same mechanic as Shield Brothers. Oh, that's so cool. It's so weird. It's so weird, but it's like so good. <laughs> they and they die, they die so easily though, like because we're so powerful. Yeah. Um, but they very much jump around like that. Like you get a third of one of a third of one of the health bars down, and then it says so and so has retreated, and their buddy comes out, and it's. I was like, hey, well, I've been talking about Shield Brothers lately. Like this is cool. Hmm. Yeah. So okay, I I would change from Axis. Then I would change to uh, I would change to Shield Brothers. Yeah. Uh. So let's see. I'm trying to. Trying to think, God, Skolas. I, I don't want to fight Skolas again. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I don't either. You know I was thinking big picture here. You, you know, it'd be really cool too to see, and maybe they could do something interesting story wise. Would be uh, the Gate Lord that you fight in D1 in the Black Garden, like a different version of the Gate Lord. Yeah, I mean, I guess we fought him as a nightmare, and we fought him somewhere else too. I think oh, you yeah, fight him as a gate lord. I, f- I forgot about fight that. him in Dares of Eternity. I forgot about uh, night the nightmare version. Um, man, uh, I think man, I'm dying. Mind that now. That's dumb. So I'm trying to I'm I'm trying to refresh him too here. Um, yeah, there's not a lot that they haven't brought forward in some way, shape, or form. No, I mean a lot of like a lot of the bosses, like I was thinking of from Court of Orcs, have been brought back in dares in some form, or just a nightmare, or you know that kind of thing. Uh, Fogoth is one they didn't bring back yet, though. Yeah, I mean, I I could be down for who was the um, it was the Rise of Iron Strike. Um, I don't think he was named the War Priest. No, it was uh, it was the Archon Priest. Arc? No, not Archon Priest. Archon Priest was on Venus. Are you sure? Talk the one that was in the uh, in the Cosmodrome. I- I'm going to look this up while you're while you're talking. I'm going to look this up. Uh, let me see. Axor Archon Priest. Nope. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't remember. I'm gonna be honest. Hang on, I'm pulling it up. Uh, the sure. wretched, uh, the wretched eye, uh, the split, the uh, the high priest, high priest, the high priest, Kovic, Kovic, the uh, the splicer priest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd like to whoop his ass again. Yeah, yeah, I I really liked Rise of Iron. Man, good times in there. I did not like Rise of Iron. Um. You know who they could bring back? The Scion Flares. You know, that wouldn't actually be like the weirdest thing. Yeah. I would love to do that as a GM. Yeah. I do now on Grandmaster would be just the, it would be the most annoying thing in the world with match game, but I could see that being a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, it would, it would definitely be like a, a feel good grandmaster once you beat it, right? Because that- yeah, it would that and shield brothers would like o- almost inst be harder than half the ones we have already. Yeah, shield brothers would probably be automatically the hardest. Yeah, shield brothers. Oh, so man. I love. Imagine shield if they throw some champions out there while you're trying to fight them too. Nope. nope. God, that'd be the worst. I'm, gi- I'm giving them ideas. Stop, Josh. You know they're gonna bring them back. You know there's gonna be something. <laughs> they're gonna do it so that we have some lives. You know they're gonna have something cool attached to it, and then <sighs> we're just gonna get our asses beat in repeatedly. Nope. Um. All right. So what? Are, what are your final three, Corey? God. Uh. So I mean, Shield Brothers is one. Hmm. Um. Shoot! I just closed the tab I had open. Uh. Man, Omnigal. Omnigal sucks. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Shield Brothers. Hmm. Gate Gate Lord, I guess. Uh but I they would have to change up the Gate Lord in some kind of Yeah, they'd have to way. give it some sort of mechanic. 
man, you know, I kind of want to say Skolas just to be a, just to be a jerk about it, but because I just think I want people to suffer like we suffered through Skolas. Honestly. So, you know what, Josh? Fair. You know what, Josh? I'm going to say Skolas, but Skolas. I'm going to say the people who defeated Skolas and got the, the, the moments of triumph in year one and it's attached to their profile, get it out. <laughs> they don't have to do it if they don't want to. I, I, I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next question comes from Joe Oasis. Joe Oasis. Uh, you can only bring one exotic, either weapon or armor, not both, with you, and the rest get destroyed. What are you taking? The whole outbreak perfected. 100%. All right, so Corey, Corey is bringing the power of Siva. Um, for me, I got to flip a coin here. Um, I'm not bringing any exotic armor. I'm going to leave my exotic armor behind. I'm a hunter. I'm leaving exotic armor behind. Uh, part of me wants to say I need to bring my stompies because uh, some of those jumping puzzles, uh, I feel like I need them on. But I'm, I'm going to be a man. I'm going to go forward without them. Um it comes down to the coin flip between Gallarhorn and Divinity. Um, Gallarhorn, of course, the most iconic weapon in Destiny history, and Divinity, uh, hands down, the best raiding weapon that there ever will be in the franchise. Like so much so that people still ask for it in LFGs um, years later, and not in a condescending way either. Like it's not like, oh, must have div to join. Like, please have a div if you join. Um, I would, pr- I guess, I would probably go Divinity. Because there's other D- there's other legendary DPS options, but there's nothing that doesn't like Divinity. I still need to go. I I should probably go and get me a Divinity. To be honest, it's great gun. I want it as a super soaker. <laughs> uh, final qu- final question tonight, uh, John. John, yours is ridiculous. I'm not reading yours. Uh, who who do you think you are? What gives you the right? Where do you get the nerve? I'm me. I'm, I'm me, bitch. I lived. Uh, um, the last question comes from Rush. What are you going to be in game for the Halloween season? I mean, a Gundam. I mean, C- Corey's going to be a Gundam. I'm going to be a Metabot, clearly. Uh, but in, if you're talking about what mask I'm going to wear, man, it, the the best mask in the game, and it's the Aldrin O face. Aldrin O face. That's the only mask that you wear in game, and you have to specifically do cutscenes with him in it. It's true. It's a lot of fun. It was great going back and doing the ending of Forsaken like that. Every year, it became a tradition. I mean, that's that's true. I mean, that is a pretty. The masks are. I forgot about. I always forget about the masks, but man, they don't forget about you. I know. Maybe I'll be the Cryptarch. Ooh, the Cryptarch's a good one too. That's like the default one, though. Uh, well, not last year. Uh, last year, I think I got a Traveler head. Wasn't the Traveler head one? I I swear the it was. Head. But I'm, I'm saying when you get the generic mask to put uh, your other masks on, it's always the Cryptarch head. Well, then, then I'm generic, Josh. Okay, I don't know what to tell you. You're generic. You're boring. <laughs> That's fine. I'm. You know what? I'm. I'm okay with boring. You know. <laughs> I was looking to see. Uh, I had definitely seen a list of the masks that are going to be in this. That's my cat sneezing in the background. If anybody can hear. Um, I was looking to see where because uh, I definitely saw a list of what the. Um masks were going to be for Halloween this year. Are they and I'm okay? trying to... F- do, they, do we know do what? what they are? Uh, from a data mine, yes. Uh, I definitely saw it like a week or two ago, and I'm scrolling through the feed I saw it in. And I'm annoyed that I can't I can't find it now. Hmm. Well, well, irregardless, 
Um, old Drano face, man. That's that with a Gundam body. That's what you want to do. That's. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm excited to see you wear the O face in a Gundam costume. The O face in a Gundam what? costume. Is the Hunter a Gundam like a Gundam robot too? I don't remember what the. No, hunter the Hunter was. definitely looks more like a Metabot. Okay. I I kind of forget. So, awful me, I guess. It wasn't. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not great. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't find it. I will eventually find the list, and we'll talk about it. Even though it's going to be in game in about a month, I still really want to talk about these, and I can't find the list, and it's bothering me. Oh, uh, that's funny. <sighs> Corey, just yeah, get me out of here. I am. Uh, so before we get out of here, a couple things, Josh. We're now on Amazon Music. And oh wow, okay. And, and Stitcher. we're coming for you, Bezos. Yeah, I. Uh, sorry if I so- seemed a little distracted a couple of times tonight. I was trying to get our stuff confirmed on Amazon Music. So we're now on Amazon Music. We're now on Stitcher, and we're now on Castbox. So if you prefer any of those platforms, you can listen to us there. Uh, so yeah. Also, uh, we have a store with our logo on some stuff if you want to get something. So, uh, there's that too. But anyways, I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening to this episode of Tower Casuals. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Tower Casuals. You can email the show towercasuals at gmail.com. Join our Discord. It's so much fun. A lot of great guardians in there. Uh, so check it out. Josh, thank you for your time tonight. I know you're not having the best of months, but uh, no, uh, I God, dude, I'm ready for August. August ended very badly. September hasn't been going great for the first third of the month. Yeah. So, but I'm glad you made some time and hung out and played or talked some some destiny so uh yeah where can we find you uh twitter at josh underscore finn two n two n's two n's yes so yeah uh you can find me at i am cory nhg on twitter and instagram uh you can find me doing other things come join the discord do all the things with us Uh, i want to thank everybody for watching and or listening and until next time we love you goodbye bye 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 now Mm.